Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for June 26th, 2019. Well, hopefully you can hear that I am improving in my voice this morning. Things are a little bit better, but please let me warn you, there is certainly the possibility of a cough sniffle or something along those lines as we go through this this morning. I truly apologize for that ahead of time. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what happened yesterday. Uh, as we talked, there was a there was a little bit of speculation that the FOMC might come out and temper this idea that we we're going to get um, substantial rate cuts um, early on, and that uh, turned out to be true yesterday. Both Bullard and then uh, Powell came out in the afternoon suggesting that, hey, a rate cut certainly may be in the cards for next month. Um, uh, kind of that ounce of prevention kind of uh, cut. But they <clears throat> definitely tamped down the idea that we're going to get a 50 basis cut or um, even more future rate cuts after that without some careful thought. So, the FOMC, although wanting to be accommodative, is also going to be very cautious and careful about how they move forward. Obviously, that created a kind of some unhappiness in the market yesterday, and we saw some sellers come into play. So what I would say is <clears throat> the bulls have been tenacious in their up move, and I would say the bulls are still in control, even though we had some selling yesterday. But I would also say they've been kind of looking through the, through uh, rose-colored glasses in this move, that glass half full kind of thing where we've been speculating that um, the Fed's going to give us everything we want to see and that the trade situation is just going to somehow magically resolve. Well, uh, last night, we in the middle of the night, basically, we get a <clears throat> story from Secretary Munchen where he says that the agreement is about 90% complete between the U.S. and China. Now, I almost chuckled at that when I first seen, uh, first saw that because I've had my fair share of contract negotiations and things like that in my life. And, and uh, some of you know that I, I once served um, uh, as a councilman for the city of, of Everett, Washington, and um, sat on quite a few tough negotiation panels uh, for different contracts and things like that. And the contract is 90% complete before you ever sat down for the first conversation. Um, it's those nasty little details <laughs> that always seem to hang things up. And it's always those little tiny pieces that we have to work through that causes all the trouble. And so, okay, so we're 90% complete, but what did he really mean? Well, if you completed reading the, reading the story, and if the Bulls had completed the re, to read the story, rather than just jumping in reaction uh, to the headline, you would see that he said that he hoped that the G20 would restart the negotiations, and the hope was to have a completed agreement by the end of the year. Now, that means six more months of the potential news spin and tweet storms and uncertainty that come along with a negotiation process. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, that could be a real rough road ahead and could be very, very challenging to, to navigate. Um, so please don't... Uh, I want I want a trade deal just like anyone, but I'm not holding out um, tremendous uh, hope that we're going to get this thing instantly done. Could we? Yes, and that would be awesome. And as a matter of fact, I think a trade deal would be a game changer for the market. But at the same time, we have to be thoughtful about how we do these things. Now, this morning's gap up is certainly going to create some pain for those who got short yesterday. Looking at nearly a 100-point gap up here in the Dow, trying to run back up here. So technically, let's take a look at what this could be. First off, we have, you know, a hanging man type pattern, a shooting star pattern, a little uh, spinning top doji 
type pattern here and then a full on bearish engulfing candle yesterday this gap back up is an attempt to reverse that and really put some pressure on those traders that might have gotten short yesterday now what this can produce <clears throat> we've seen this before uh, recently where we get uh, so many uh, uh, bears pushing in one direction and then the bulls push it the other direction creating a short squeeze it is entirely possible that the bears or excuse me that the bulls could squeeze those bears hardening hard enough it would force them to buy to cover that could move us even higher in this market that is certainly a possibility what we do want to make a uh, note of here particularly in the diamonds is we have levels of resistance that we have to deal with in this chart so i've got a couple right here those levels of resistance that we have to pay attention to in this chart if we rally and break back through those that is certainly a possibility we could rally on up we could see those new highs come into play anything is possible on the same side uh, on the other side of the coin i should say we could see this morning's pop turn into that pop and drop where we gap up and find nothing but sellers and we end up selling back off this morning so what i would suggest is to be really really careful about chasing into this this morning let's watch carefully how that price action develops after the open and after we get through some of the um, economic reports today that certainly will have something to say about the market let's take a look um, if if we do pull back and remember i've said this before i think as long as we stay above our 50-day moving average we still have a bullish market could we get a little technical damage a little bit of back and forth and sideways here if we drop all the way to the 50-day and i think that answer to that is yes but we still will be um, significantly bullish overall here in the market. Let's take a look at the SPY now. SPY also pulling back pretty sharply yesterday. Not exactly a confidence builder. And it is gapping up this morning. Trying to lift back up about halfway through that. Now you can see this in several different ways. First off, if we take a look at our 50 day moving average here on the SPY, you can see that we're well above that 50 day moving average and we're still holding above this support level in price action on the chart. That is bullish. We could also, if you're that glass half em empty type person, you could see this as a new high failure and um, a rejection of the highs and could be seeing some bearishness um, in the near future. I don't know which one is true and I definitely do not want to try and predict that. What I will say is the bulls will likely not give up easily but there will be a fight in here so if we do happen to push on lower watch that 50-day moving average area this downtrend area as a hold of support and that honestly that pullback right there could set up really good upside potential now if we happen to break on through today we get that short squeeze firing off and we happen to break on through then watch this level up here it'll be a really telltale sign if we end up closing up here bulls are still wildly in control of this rally in the market let's take a look at the cues Q's had a little bit of a rough day yesterday as well, pulling back, but once again, holding above its 50-day moving average. Now, we're much closer here on this 50-day moving average, and the unfortunate thing here in the Q's is they have been unable to break out like the Diamonds and the Spy have uh, essentially done. So we still have that situation where this could turn out to be a lower high in uh, the NASDAQ. So we'll want to watch that a little bit closely. Uh, in case that were to come to fruition, um, we a lower high obviously can mean lower lows in the market. Let's hold that 50-day moving average and see if we can hold on there. Now, if we can hold that 50-day moving average, this to me looks like a perfect setup for an upside move. But if we cannot, if we slip back below that 50-day moving average and struggle around that area, Q's would be an area where I'd want to keep an eye on. Last but not least is IWM. And IWM all along has just been uh, pretty darn weak. And that is playing out to be true here as well. We have this downtrend in play. And this now constitutes another lower high failure here for 
IWM and were failing at rather significant levels of resistance in the chart. So this index has already failed back down through its 50-day moving average. So that is certainly a concern. We have a level of price support right in here below this. And if we can hold there, we might be okay for that bounce back up. Please keep in mind that anytime we fail through a 50-day moving average, this failure is not the one to be concerned about. The failure to be concerned about would be the one if we rally back and then fail at that as resistance. That would be the one to really be worried about, that place where we could really see those sellers come into play. So watch that closely. Okay, um, let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX finally got a little bit of, of move in it yesterday, perking up here. But not enough to really raise a whole lot of alarm bells, in my opinion. If we take a look um, right through here, this is a significant level in this chart. Moving back above that um, certainly raises um, a little bit of concern. But if we also take a look at our current downtrend um, here in the VIX, we really haven't moved into... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we really haven't moved into an alarming uh, rally back up here in the VIX. So we're going to want to watch this closely. It is entirely possible this could continue to complete this wedge in here, whether it goes up or whether it goes down from here. I don't know, but we'll want to watch that closely. The real concern I think that I would begin to have in the VIX is if we see that VIX spike above this area and then actually hold this area as support. That's where the trouble could really begin. So I think we've got a long ways here before the VIX really gives us um, some serious problems, but we definitely want to keep an eye on those levels in, in that chart. Let's take a look at <clears throat> let's take a look at T21 22. Oops. T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And if we take a look at this on a line chart, just a standard old line chart, it's showing us that <clears throat> the pullback yesterday brought us back down here into these lower areas. But we've got a long ways to go before we reach oversold condition in the market. Now, this morning's gap up is likely going to move us back up into this region up in here. So kind of keep that in mind. We have plenty of room for an upside move. We still have significant room for downside. I don't know if this means that we get that gap up and and short squeeze to really fire us higher or if we get that gap up and sellers come in and push it right back down in more of a pop and drop pattern. But um, no matter what happens, we're going to have to be on our toes and uh, be very focused and disciplined to our rules of engagement for this market. It could still could be a pretty challenging day. Let's take a look <coughs> at our economic calendar for today. We have some significant things on the calendar today to be paying attention to. First off, our durable goods orders. Our durable goods orders, obviously, a big market moving uh, potential report right here at 8.30 a.m. And then the international trading goods also potentially a big market mover. So we'll want to stay focused on that. If, we're for, if we are truly going to begin to see <clears throat> um, our economy begin to weaken, it's going to be in these numbers. And that could definitely start to affect um, our market. So watch that closely if that were to occur. Also, um, later on today, we have the EIA Petroleum Status Report. We all know that can be certainly um, important to um, oil prices and that um, boost in oil prices that we've seen here lately because of the tensions in, in Iran. Um, if we see large builds in U.S. supplies, that might hinder those from moving higher. So let's watch that closely. 
<clears throat> so with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you, oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, on the earnings calendar, we, we have about 18 companies reporting earnings uh, today, and there are certainly um, important stocks to pay attention to uh, um, this morning um, on that that could move the market around a little bit. Take a look at General Mills. General Mills missed on, in, on its earnings report, as you can see and is gapping down substantially here this morning. Um, that doesn't help us at all in the market. We have PAYX that's supposed to report today. So far, I see no report in there. Um, KBH also reporting today. And I see no, um, no evidence that it has reported as well this morning. Um, there's also uh, BlackBerry reporting today. It looks like BlackBerry may have reported it may be sinking just a slightly um, this morning. So we'll want to um, pay attention to these reports as they, uh, they come out. I don't expect them to be largely market moving, but a um, little bit more key reports than we've seen here the last few days. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Well, actually, before we take a look at some stocks that may be um, setting up for potential trades, um, I want to take a second to just say thank you to everyone who watches these videos. And if this happens to be the first time you have seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. And then when that pop-up pops up, when you click that subscribe button, make sure you click that bell icon so that you can be notified every time I put out one of these videos. And I try to do these every single day, obviously being sick on, uh, I wasn't able to get one out on Monday, but, um, um, I do the very best job I can of, of always every market day, putting out one of these videos to help folks prepare for the day and to think about how you might want to approach the market. And I believe preparation is far more important than luck. And, um, if you find these videos helpful, please do me a favor, click those thumbs up buttons, um, and leave a comment. Every one of those thumbs up buttons and comments that are left helps the algorithms to show these videos to more people. And um, I, the intention is not to make money from these videos. That's not what I'm trying to do here. It truly is to help other traders do a better job with their preparation for the day. And I can tell you that this kind of work has, has helped me to um, maintain my edge and stay productive in the market and being able to support my family, put a couple kids through college. I'm now in my 15th year as a full-time trader. I feel very, very blessed for that. But par part of that is because of the work that I'm willing to do in that preparation. So if you find these helpful, please also feel free to share these videos with any friends or family. Share them on Facebook or Twitter. It's perfectly acceptable. So with that, everyone... Let's take a look at a few stocks, and I'm going to be looking at some of the stocks that we looked at yesterday. Um, a, a few of those stocks that are just really, really looking pretty good and really giving us <clears throat> that opportunity for some upside move. Um, really good looking stocks. So now, <clears throat> a stock that wasn't on my list yesterday that I think is just looking very, very good, and I've mentioned this one before. Although I don't have this line marked out as pink, this was the alert um, in the trade. And you can see we have a chart that has been just winding around in this wedge pattern. I actively look for these wedge patterns in trending stocks because they, they perform so well. As long as we have a trend, I'm always going to be favoring the upside of that move. And you can see this break right in here. Beautiful upside move. Now, QD needs a little bit of rest, a little bit of consolidation, possibly even a pullback. And what I would be looking for is this just to make its return either back to the trend or consolidate to the trend. And then we look for that next opportunity into that trade. So um, QD looking pretty good, and I would pr certainly want to have that on a list for a potential trade. Take a look at UNH here. Now, UNH has been struggling here just a little bit along this level of price resistance. And you can see it right here in the chart. I've got it marked in pink, and that's actually my alert on the trade. 
um, I and we have this little trend going uh, to the upside. I need to see UNH fire up in here um, and pop on through. If we can fire up and pop on through, there may be an opportunity here in this stock. Certainly, we have broken this short-term downtrend in the trade. And there's that wedge pattern again setting up just like I showed you on QD. And that wedge pattern, if we can pop to the upside, can produce those nice upside moves and just continue this trend on higher. So you might want to keep an eye on UNH. Please remember that any of these stocks that I cover in these videos are not meant as buy and sell um, decisions. They are merely charts of interest, charts that you might want to keep an eye on. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Let's take a look at McDonald's MCD. You guys know that I mentioned this yesterday. MCD, uh, <clears throat> nice little tight consolidation, continuing this trend. Yesterday, tried to push on higher. That little bit of bearishness in the market pushed it back down. But I think McDonald's is setting itself up for more upside move. Keep an eye on MCD. You should also be keeping an eye on TTWO. TTWO, after breaking through this significant level of price resistance in the chart, moving through, getting a little pullback yesterday on yesterday's selling. But as long as we hold in here, we could see this move on higher. So keep an eye on TTWO. And because I'm running out of time in this video and I, I was a little bit long-winded in the beginning and talking a little bit slower because of my voice, I'm going to have to cut this video off today. So I want to wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful day. I want to wish you great profits. And if you're struggling, please never give up on your dream. Keep working at it. And if you need some help, find it. Go find someone to talk to. You know, there's no shame in asking for some help. It, it, this is a very, very challenging business, but one that I highly recommend that you never give up on. Everyone take care. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you all bright and early Thursday morning, and hopefully with a better voice. Take care now.